Merry Christmas, ladies and gentlemen from around the world. I hope you guys had a very good one with the family if you're not currently having a good one. So, the 12 days of Christmas, welcome to day 14, where we have one more code to give away from our friends at Tier Zero Games. And this is going to be it. This is the end of your journey. You finally have made it to the last deck profile that we've had locked up. And I do hope that you guys, like I said, hope you guys have a good time with your family. I hope that you guys, you know, you get entered into this contest. All you gotta do is like, comment, make sure you subscribe to the channel, as always. And, guys, yesterday's winner will be down below. And I will probably have today's winner on Market Watch on Friday. Um, that way I have a place to put it consistently. Now, without further ado, let's dig on into that final deck profile, shall we? Just kidding, there's going to be a lot more this week. The 12 days of Christmas finally are at the end. Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas, Duelist. I hope you guys have had a good time with your friends and family. Holidays might be over. Well, actually, they're not over. We still have New Year's. Where we uh, get to complain about 2020 and how it's going to be the worst year in Yu-Gi-Oh! Just kidding. I actually am looking very forward to seeing the impact of the new format. So, the 12 Days of Akano has brought us another Akano deck profile. I know, it's really strange, right? Now, you guys know I'm a huge sucker for the Charmers, but my favorite one is Iria. Akano doesn't like Iria, but that's fine. You know, we will beg to differ on opinions and waifus. But today we're going to be profiling the final deck that Akano sent in and said, Robbie, we both agree that waifus are supreme tier. And I'm like, absolutely. So we always have to feature a charmer deck. It's just kind of, it's part of the staple now. Next, you know, stack the deck, the god cards, extravaganza. Maybe we'll profile that. If I get a, enough comments down below, I will probably take some time to upload a uh, Dark Magician and uh, just a nice update to the Dark Magician and Dark Magical Circle true name deck where we would just activate Circle, stack our deck, activate true name, and we get free advantage because summoning a god card for no reason is ever so crazy. So, what is a Charmer deck? It is a deck that is going to be acting on a control access to basically attempt to win the game. You're going to have to interact with your opponent's cards. It's a nice little cheese gimmick, per se. Um, but you have to remember, you're a deck that's going to have to grind with your opponent in order to kind of get those advantages. Now, the card that kind of makes this deck a little bit better is Possessed Awakening. So all monsters you control gain attack equal to the number of different attributes you control times 300. Charmer and yeah, familiar possessed monsters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects. So, hey, pretty good. And if a spellcaster monster or monsters with your 1850 attack is normal or special summon, you can draw one card. So, you want to use your deck's ability to turbo through. We, we've always needed a fantastic draw engine. Possessed Awakening actually gives you something that we've been struggling with for the longest time, and it's one, built-in conviction to get cards, two, a nice power-up to your monsters, and three, protection. All right, so you just normal summon beat down your opponent that deck. I love it. And then, of course, you guys know about this beauty. This is the other thing that allows this deck to be possible. It's uh, Charmer Monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. So you basically create a nice little soft lock for your opponent. If a familiar possessed monster you control attacks an opponent's monster, it gains 800 attack during damage calculation. If a monster or monsters you control is destroyed by Bellar card effect, and special summon one spellcaster monster with 1500 or less defense from your deck, whose attribute is different from at least one of those destroyed by the whatever, in attack mode or face down defense mode. So, this deck is actually kind of taking advantage of the flip effects so we have eh, we'll, we'll, we'll dig more into that here so we have triple copies of ash blossom in joyous springeru and then we have triple copies of dehark the dark charmer 
So this is the one that's flip, take control of one dark monster opponent controls while this card remains face up on the field. Now you would think that these might not be that great. And I mean, hindsight's 50-50 with this. Uh, because we do know that flip effect monsters are generically slower creatures in the game. But dark is one of the most popular attributes in the game. And Thunder Dragon Colossus, you said this, you're like, oh hey, nice Colossus, let me just take that. Like, as long as you have the appropriate attribute up to take, you're good to go. Then we have two copies of Fairy Tale Luna. So on normal summon, you can add one spellcast monster with 1850 attack. So we have this one, we have this one, you we have this one. Like, let's be honest here. The fact that this interacts with this deck and that way for you to search and gain advantage is great. Plus, you know, you get the double-sided effect here of once per turn, target one face of monster, you control and your opponent. And then you get to go ahead and uh, make them send. If they can't, well, you get a free bounce. Like, absolutely. And that's why we're citing the Kaiju package for this level of interactivity. So that we can just punish our opponent and be like, well, what do you do, my guy? Like, there's only so much that you can do when playing against bad decks like this. So, we have Dehark. So you can swap some of this card from your hand or deck by sending one face of Dehark. You control one face of Dark Monster. You control the graveyard. That's a really fun fact, actually. Those of you that don't know, if you actually resolve the flip effect and take control of a Dark Monster, you need to send both of them to the graveyard to actually hard summon this, by the way. And then, when you do, you can add one light level 3 or f 4 light spellcast monster from your deck to your hand. This card was supposed to by this effect and attacks a defense position monster. You get to do trample to your opponent. So this actually recurs for your light monster over here. And, and, gives you trample. So, I always kind of thought that was really cool, that, like, Dehark is actually that good. Now... We have Heat over here, so you can send one Heat and one Fire Monster Control the Graveyard, especially some of this card from your hand or deck. Hmm, so Heat and the solid matchup take something. I'll go ahead and roar this one out. And then you also get Trample on this. So, same thing as our previous uh, boss monster here. Uh, this one, unfortunately, doesn't grant you a, a nice search effect like the other one does, but that's fine because we will take Trample. Then we have Lina, same thing. If you have the light face up and you take control of a light monster, you send them, you get to go ahead and special this card. Then you add one spellcast monster to 1500 defense from your deck to your hand. If this card is special by its own effect, you get trample once again. It's very basic for what they're giving you for these, but I get it. Then we have the triple Hita for taking control of fire and triple Lin for taking control of light monsters. Outside of that, I mean, that's your lineup in a nutshell here. Then for spells, we have triple possessed awakening, of course. Triple duality to sift through to get to your key cards. Um, I mean, literally, your draw power is only limited by what you can really do. Um, we have triple copies, pot of extravagance. You don't care about your extra deck all that much. I mean, you do, but you don't. Uh, mainly just because of super poly targets. Uh, we have one copy of Secret Village of the Spellcasters, of course. Uh, you only play one of this, by the way. So the big thing with this is, yes, um, having this on the field to lock your opponent does put you in a better position, but there's just some matchups where you just need more of that draw power and things. You don't want to be locked out of something if they just start breaking your board. Then we have triple copies of Super Polymerization to disrupt for those more annoying matchups. Uh, see pending extra deck changes for Master Rule 4.5. One Terraforming, triple Solemn Judgment, and triple copies of Unpossessed Arena. And then down here in the extra deck, we have one Unicorn, one Phoenix, one Cerberus, Two copies of Hita because this deck's best matchup should probably be solid. I mean, it's probably going to lose anyway because it's like tier four, but that's fine because we're going to try. We have one Boral Sword, two copies of Dingrisu, two copies of Starving Venom, two copies of the Violet Chimera, two copies of Trevovertum, and one copy of the Dragostopelia here. So I take it with triple Pankertops, two copies of Doggeron. One Jizukuru, two copies of Radeon, one Thunder King, the Lightning Strike Kaiju, triple Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, and triple copies of Evenly Matched. Wrapping up this bad boy. <sighs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Like I said, if you guys want to leave some good comments, please, I would very much like you to do so. It's so easy. You get entered into today's contest. Who loves multi-purposing task? It's so great. And... Well, you know, also tell me what you guys got for Christmas. I'd actually like to hear that. 
Now you guys got card game related things. You got deodorant. Your mom bought you socks. Always be thankful for the socks, by the way. You know how many times you just don't want to spend money on socks? It's weird, actually. Growing up, you're just like, I don't want socks. And all of a sudden, you're an old man. You're like, I need socks. I don't want to buy these. They're expensive. All right, guys. <laughs> I will see you guys back tomorrow with your regularly scheduled programming. Peace out. The ride never truly ends. Thank you, patrons, for helping support the channel. Without you guys, I don't know if I'd still be doing this. And for those of you that like Cardfight Vanguard, Vancol40 is here for all your content needs. And those of you asking if I sell cards, mcoolgames.com for all your trading card game needs. Check the description for more interesting info. Thanks for watching, guys.